How's it going, gents? Here we are today in the forest on a Ducati. A Ducati Desert X. Uh, I am doing a solo, all my own, shambles adventure. Complete and utter shambles. The reason is many. Uh, one, I don't really know where I'm going. I don't really know what I'm riding in. I'm on a bike that I know nothing about. I know nothing about the Desert X. Um, I literally picked it up, like, slapped some gear on the back of it and said, I'm going on a freaking three-day ride across a desert. Why not, eh? When I know nothing about this bike, I don't even know what gear I got. I literally just grabbed a bag, put some freaking straps on it, and uh, took off. Um, I'm also on tires that are, like, terrible. Um, they're, like very road focused and also worn out um so me going through sand and and it's been raining for like three days or so so um this is going to be shambles um but i'm excited it's it, it feels like a good bike um i've just ridden out to the forest um i really want to actually get some get some miles on the thing see what it's like feels really good the ergonomics are nice you jump on it and it feels like a dirt bike it's thin. It's thin between the legs. Power's good. Brakes, Kayaba suspension feels good. But we haven't really done much yet. We've just been smashing down a dirt road. We're getting into the thicker things. So the goal is tonight. Um, I've started off late. I had to pick this up from the caddy. My mate in the caddy Melbourne is borrowing out to me. Um, thanks, Kiwi. So I had to pick it up, slap some gear on it, and it is already friggin'. 320 um and it's gonna get dark by about like 6 30 or something so i about three hours to get i'm gonna go to the grampians my first little camp just camp out in the grampians um then there's a really good little twin track uh, back to halls gap from my camp spot i'll do that tomorrow um and then i'm gonna head to the border of south australia and victoria and do the border track that leads up to little desert um and then head to big desert and do some sand see if this thing can actually handle some sand uh, and then I'm going to do camp in Big Desert and then do my little lake, uh, awesome little sand track that's really meant for enduro bikes. But hell, we'll do it on a freaking Ducati Desert X, eh? Because it's an enduro bike. Uh, and then we'll bush bash back to Melbourne. That's the goal. Let's see if I achieve any of it. Um, it's already quite shambly, but let's go. Ducati Desert X. Let's go get some lattes. All right, rally. This feels so light and nimble in comparison to the uh, GS that I just had in Europe. Oh my god, that thing was so heavy. That was too heavy, man. I had that thing weighed down so much. All right, full power rally mode. Let's see what this is like, eh? Still a lot of traction control. A shit ton of traction control. It's kind of too much. You'd think, like, for a rally mode, it would um, give you a little bit more slip than that. I know the 790 gives you a shit ton of slip. Whoa! That gave me some slip. This bummer, it's got a stock exhaust on it, man. If I had a Acura or a Termi on it, do they do Termis? I'm freaking. Do they even do Termagoni exhaust with Ducatis anymore? I think it's all Acuras now. This feels like a big freaking Ducati dirt bike, man. It's freaking cool. Um, like the Tenere is a bit more like that as well. But this is honestly thinner, like between my legs than my WR. The ergos are spot on as well. The bars are nice and high. The seat's pretty good. I'll have to tell you enough. A couple of hours. It always takes a couple of hours to get a feel for a seat. The standing's great. The bars are nice and high. Um, I would not, I, I even bar rate, like I put bar risers on my 790 because I went high enough, but this feels good, like straight from freaking, straight out of the shop. I really like it, man. Like I really like the Ducati Multistrada V4 that I rode. Um, that was a massive surprise, like a massive surprise. I was not expecting, I, I just was thinking that was going to be a pig off-road. Like it was a joke that I took it like through a single track and shit. Um, <laughs> and it turned out to be a, a really fun weekend on it. 
So uh, when I like, my mate was like, "Well, freaking take a Desert X out, which is actually freaking good, like really good off road." I was like, "Yes!" Somehow Ducati are making amazing freaking adventure bikes. This is this is something about like caring for animals that is really difficult. I think I just went past a magpie that had been hit by a car and I don't think it's dead. This is like being a vet would be really hard because you know as a vet you might really love animals but you've got to spend a lot of your time putting down animals. So right now I'm gonna go check on this magpie but if it's not dead but it's clearly very injured what the frick am I gonna do about it? Could have just kept riding but you're right, mate. Are you just you're just blowing in the wind. You, no, you, you're still alive. Ah, bugger! How hurt are you, mate? Mate, you, you guys bloody won the premiership. How how hurt are you, champy? Are you like I've got to put you down, hurt, or do you just need a rest? I don't know. Come here, mate. Oh, yes, I know. How about we just put you where you can rest? Is that your friend? Mate, you're the premiers this year. You just won the... You won the flag. You can't die yet, matey. You, you're doing all right. Oh, you've lost a wing or something. I don't think you're hurt enough to... Be put down, but you're probably you're probably gonna struggle. What do we do? How's your wingy? You hurt your little wingy, haven't you? You're a baby because you've got the grey. Right, I'm just gonna leave you here before my Ducati gets run over. Oh, please don't run over my Ducati. Godspeed, little magpie. I think you'll pull through. You're young. You'll be right. I'm gonna give this little guy a shot, eh? I'm, I'm sure he's a goner. Like, he's a, just an actual goner, this magpie. Actually, I don't even know. He's still even with us, mate. But we're gonna give him a chance at life. Quickly run him over to a vet. Mate, this is the third animal I've rescued in this backpack alone. Come on, magpie. We're gonna get you to a vet. Even though 99% chance you're gonna die. Please don't bite me. I'm gonna give you a chance. Don't please don't claw. In the backpack. One little magpie. There are, I think they're like canola oil flowers. You use them for oil. I believe these yellow flowers out in the western suburbs, beautiful looking paddocks. Uh, the windmills and everything, it's beautiful riding out here, man. I am going a little bit out of my way to take this magpie to the vet. I'm gonna lose a little bit of time, so I'm gonna have to do mostly highway to get back. Um, look at those flowers, man. I couldn't just leave him, man, like the little magpie. He'd clearly been hit by a car or something and was just gonna sit there and die. Or get eaten by a fox or a cat or something tonight. Alright, made it to the vet. Let's hope Maggie the magpie is still alive in my backpack. Probably not, but we'll give him a shot, eh? There you go, Maggie. All right, Maggie the Magpie is still alive, still pretty spirited. I think the vet said broken wings, but, but he was not going to make it on his own. So we might have just saved a humble magpie. But let's get to Halls Creek Grampians. Done a good deed for the day. Let's keep adventuring. So the bike's got the rear tank option. There's, I think, like an 8-litre tank on the back. Uh, so my mate Kiwi was telling me, he's like, so what's going to happen is that when your front tank gets low, it's going to come up on the screen to say, do you want to transfer the rear tank to the front tank? And you just press like a normal button, just like, okay. 
and it would pump the rear to the front and then you use the front which is uh, different to any other kind of like sub tank bikes I've had before usually they have switches or T T little junctions and stuff but uh, this one seems to be the most advanced right now I have 54 kilometers of range in the front tank the rear tank should be full so I reckon soon maybe when it's 30 k's it'll prompt me to do the transfer I don't know if I have to stop or if I can transfer the fuel while I'm going I don't know man we'll find out soon all right so I've got 21 kilometers of range so that's the front tank is pretty empty so let's see if we can get the rear tank to fill the front tank, eh? Right, I don't know what it did, but I did get to the fuel transfer, and I'm going to say yes. Look. I can hear it. There's a little pump or something. We're transferring fuel. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop, doop. Pretty cool. So advanced. I wonder how long this takes. So the fuel transfer finished. I could do it while riding. It was taking quite a while. Then I realized like it's transferring eight liters. This is gonna take quite a while from a little, a little electric pump. So I took off and it kept transferring the fuel. And then it finished. Now I have like three quarters of a tank. Um, it's got a little indicator on the bottom that shows my, my rear tank is now empty, which is good. In case you get on the bike and you can't remember if you've used your rear tank or not. There was a guy who did the Fink. Alice Springs to Fink and back on one tank on the Desert X. I'm guessing he had the rear tanks, but that is insane. That's 400 k's of sand. Very, very, very hard sand, so... This thing should be able to get to freaking Grampians, man. Gotta get... I think I better buy wood. This campsite that I'm going to is a pretty popular one. So it means that there's never any wood around. And anything that's gonna be around is probably gonna be wet now because it's been raining. So my little titanium frying pan, so I might get like a mini steak. I got these little steaks. Otherwise I got some pasta in my little pot. Uh wood and that's it. And I've downloaded Castaway. I'm gonna watch Castaway. Love it! What a little weekend away on my own. I don't even need anyone, man. Everyone else can suck it. All I need is me and a Ducati. Woo! Brick me. Brick, that's the closest I've come to. Oh my God, I'm shaking. Woo! Holy brick! I just almost, that was a big kangaroo, man. Oh my God. I just had a huge kangaroo and then a smaller kangaroo jump in front of me. And it was like, they just came out of the bushes like this. I had absolutely no time. Literally all I did was go like this. I just put my head down. Didn't even touch the brakes. Holy frick. That was, I went in between the two of them. And they were like centimeters. I don't know if I hit the tail or something. Holy frick. I just put my head down, just waiting for the impact. Woo! Frick, man. See, that's always the scariest thing. Like, say you're sitting on a country road like this in Australia, you're doing 100. I think I'm always the most scared out is like a kangaroo popping out from the brush. <coughs> like, when you just, you just have no warning. All right, so day one on the Desert X. And I will say, she is a beautiful bike. Uh, on the road. Now I'm comparing this to my 790. They're a similar weight. They're a similar uh, horsepower. This one's got a little bit more horsepower. The 790 was a little bit lighter. <coughs> now we all know the 790 is kind of king of the adventure bikes uh, on the dirt. It was a fantastic off-roading machine. Um, no one will really dispute that. It is known now. The suspension was absolutely beautiful. It was a fantastic bike off-road. But what I will say is I like this Desert X better on the road. I did a lot of road K's on my six, uh, 790. I think this is better. But that's why I want to get into the off-road and shit. Because who knows? It might be just as good as a 790 off-road. Um, I don't think it will be. But I will say, man, this ergonomics of having it thin through your legs, I just straight up already feel like it could be better than the 790. I'll really have to test. The front end was the real special bit of the 790. That front fork that I had on it. 
was phenomenal. Alright. Pulling into Hall's Gap. And it is freaking raining again. It's a bit annoying. Um, one thing that sucks about motorcycle camping, man. Freaking rain. Never fun. Because there's no way to really like deal with rain on a motorbike. I mean, you can bring a tarp or something. I feel like Nerve's got a pretty good setup for rain with his hammock. It's kind of like a tarp setup that I usually just bring a bivy and shit. So there's nothing more miserable than like rocking up to a campsite and raining. So you just get into your bivy. It's like just lying in a trash bag all night. But I made it on time, even with the uh, magpie saving. 6.05 general store is open until 7.30 so I've got plenty of time to get stark at about 7.30 um, and my campsite is about 10 minutes away should be quiet in the Grampians well, this is where I'm going the general store just stocked up the Desert X. I have a bag of wood. I don't know how I'm going to get that to the campsite. Stocked up at the general store in Hall's Gap. Also saying hi to the locals. A couple of grey kangaroos. Almost took one out before. Look at the little Joey. You want some... Give me some grass too, ma'am. Go a bit lower. I want some grass. I almost hit your freaking cousin before, kangas. Yeah, your mate. Your mate. Yum, 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 yum. Give me the grass, mum. Go a little bit lower. Nine Ks to the campsite. We got, what do we get? Two steaks. A uh, pack of Doritos. They didn't have Enduro tinnies, but they had um 6% wood stock, so got a four pack of them. Not a lot, but... That'll keep me going. It is 6.46. It gets dark at 7.30. Ooh, tinted visor. A little darker tinted visor, but should be right. Now, there will be thousands of kangaroos around. Literally thousands. I will show you right now. We can see the paddock. There'll be a paddock out there. Or maybe it was just back there. Oh, yeah, you can see them here. One, two, three, four, 700. 700 kangaroos. Sometimes there's emus out there. There's emus! Hey, emu! Why there's a lot of emus now. What? Um, oh, you're not going to be able to see shit on this camera, but massive. Oh, I'll, I'll show you on my... Oh, this is probably not good. The bag of wood. Look at all those chickens. So that... It's what I'm trying to avoid. The literal Australian coat of arms out in the paddock there. Do not hit them, please. That's what I'm avoiding, because they will be running through here to try and get up these mountains. Or running down from the mountains, trying to get out to the paddock, so. And I got a bag of wood in my lap. I just got a five, five kilo bag of kindling. I think my plan is, because I'm getting there a little early. Solid half an hour of lightage. I'm gonna go, this front is a little vague. Was, uh, when I was picking up the bike, um, strange enough, Eric Banner was in Ducati, Melbourne. Um, he is a Desert X himself, Eric Banner. He was telling me the stock tires aren't good on the front, and I kind of agree. Uh, this isn't good. I'm gonna air it down quite a bit. Oh, I should have aired it down bloody Hall's Gap, man. Uh, oh yeah, that is quite vague, isn't it? It is all right, but you know, the front, especially this floaty kind of, Little bit. Definitely need to air down, I think. And now it's raining again. Oh, this is a, oh my god. Oh, frick! I just looked down, I'm like, I was just gonna say, my, I hope my bag of wood stays dry. I uh, just hit a little one. Frick! Oh no! Poor little bugger. Just missed you, mate. Oh, I think it's gone. Oh, rest in peace, brother. Oh, no.
He's not dead yet. Freaking hell, man. What is with today? Well, I mean, I didn't hit the freaking magpie today, but... Injured wildlife in Hall's Gap. <sighs> Alright, I've just called wildlife rescue for your little son. I'm going to walk away from you. I'll leave the bike there with the lights on, but I'm going to walk away because I'm just going to be stressing him out. So I'm just going to go for a, a walk, leave the lights on at the bike. Old mate's 10 minutes away. I'm going to move my bag of wood. No, he's still hanging in there. Here's not. Fuck, you didn't come off. Ah, didn't, even, one, didn't even feel him, yeah, I only just, he just came out of the scrub. Yeah. He's not doing well, but he's still, still alive. I'll have to put it down. Yeah. Nothing to do with him. Thanks, mate. Jesus Christ. I did not think he was going to pull the 22 out and shoot him. Grab me a bag of friggin' wood. Unfortunately, it's probably a pretty common occurrence here in Hall's Gap. There's just little grey kangaroos everywhere, man. Little Eastern greys. That one I did not see in the slightest, so I'll probably pull over to the right. So try and stay right in the middle. Mate. Too many dead animals today. My magpie that I saved, they call me when I was at the shop. They put him down. Uh, two fractured wings. So he's going off to Sleepville. Little Skippy there is just going off to Sleepville. Let's have a nice slow, slow ride into the campground. Jeez, stop looking at your phone, Tom. I had another freaking kangaroo jump in front of me. I mean, it was miles away, but like, why are you, Why is my phone tripping out? Don't look at it, look ahead. I looked down at the bag of freaking wood. I mean, I never would have saw that little kangaroo. Popped out right from the side and just went straight on my wheel, but. I don't know where I'm going, it doesn't matter. Just my phone charge. Ugh. Oh my God, they're everywhere, the little bastards. I mean, I probably should have just put him down myself. Just, I can't do it, man. Like, I mean, I could have just, there's one there just hopping up the track. I could have just ran over his head or something with the bike a couple times and it should have, like, you know, do the job. He's a good bloke, though. Even though there's not much you can do for the little, the little kangas, at least they're not suffering all night long. Imagine sitting there with a freaking broken spine or some shit just dying all day long. It's not empty, but. This is very empty. Normally this campground is very busy. This is where I camp every single time. My wife's calling me because I told her I hit a finger. All right, just made it to the campground. There's also some logs over there, which is good. Big bastards. Probably super wet. Go man kindling. I'm gonna get everything out of this bag, put it here in the tent, and then I get some wood before it gets dark, which will be very soon. I couldn't find any bits of wood that'll fit in my bag, so I thought, I'll just get one long bit, and we'll just freaking hack it up when we get there. Do you reckon I can ride back to camp with that? Perfect, as long as there's no two trees in the way. Should be right. Mate, this stick on my bike, I don't think I could miss a kangaroo. Any kangaroo that comes near me is dead. All right, we're all set up, tent, Got a little crackling fire going. Everything's really wet. That bag of kindling, I think, is going to help a lot. Should be able to start <coughs> drying out stuff. Get my big feeder log in. Uh, let's get some coals going. We can get the steaks going. Then we can get some tinnies. And watch some Castaway with Tom Hanks. Wilson! The fire's struggling a bit. She's not doing too good, but steak on a little titanium frying pan. These are on there. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <he's... sighs> doesn't get any better mate. Not a bad steaky, but unfortunately it's raining again. 
my fire is struggling. Bloody hell. It's rain stopped. Castaway's going strong. Going for another fire. This uh, kindling that I bought from the uh, shop is not burning well. It's like, it chars, but doesn't actually burn. <laughs> Must be wet or something, because it's just struggling. It has been raining and windy. My campfire failed miserably. So I've literally been watching Castaway in between these two big pine trees. See, pine tree, pine tree. I'm in between them. I have a little bit of no wind, no rain. I'm like right behind this one. It's blocking the wind and the rain. And I'm just watching Castaway sitting here in the complete darkness like that. Shambles. Bedtime. Desert X is all asleep. We're in the tent. It is a cold night. It's gonna be about five degrees or four degrees. So getting all tucked in. Time for bed. Let's go. Night night. Bop, bop. Oh why is that is that peaking? Hello? That's a peaking. Peaky peaky. Hello.